What if it were shown to you that what you believe to be Valentine's Day in your mind is not really what Valentine's Day is in reality? What if I prove to you that Valentine's Day is actually a satanic and pagan ritual? Sounds crazy, right? Yeah, I know. But nothing is ever really what it seems to be. You see, the problem is you don't ask questions. You just go with the flow, right? You've been taught to just do as others do. You've been programmed to go with the program. So now, with that being said, what you need to do is sit down and lend me your ear for a few minutes so we can understand why you do these things. And then you can get the origin of this thing. And then you can consciously decide if you want to continue doing it or if you want to do away with it. Because you have been naively beguiled into worshiping Satan. And I'm going to show you exactly how Valentine's Day is a pagan ritual. Lupercalia was an ancient, possibly pre-Roman, pastoral annual festival observed in the city of Rome from the 13th to the 15th of February to avert evil spirits and purify the city releasing health and fertility. So the association of February 14th and Romans actually goes all the way back to the ancient Roman pagan festivals of love and fertility known as the Lupercalia in honor of the Roman god called Lupercus. Lupercus was a protector of the farmers harvesting and packed of wild animals every year on 15 February in honor of him the Romans held the Lupercalia he helped the wolf take care of Romulus and Remus this is why Lupercalia was a celebration that helped pregnant women in Greek mythology it was counterpart of the god Phone and after the god Pan. An ancient Italian divinity who was worshipped by shepherds as the protector of their flocks against wolves, at the same time as a promoter of fertility among sheep. Hence, it was called Enus or Ephiatus. So, Lupercus was a Roman god of fertility, and the legend has it that Lupercus actually helped a female wolf to feed on Romulus and Remus, who were a twin brothers, whose uh, story, uh, story tells the events that led to the founding of the city of Rome and the Roman uh, kingdom by Romulus. If you know anything about uh, Roman history, then you know what I'm talking about. So that's the story behind it. So this is why you have the image of twin brothers, little kids, suckling a female wolf in the city of Rome. You have this image uh, all over the place. This is the legend behind it. That's the story behind it. So the Roman uh, uh, deity, Lupercus, Who's the one who helped that woman, that uh, female wolf, to feed those twin brothers? And because of that, the feast of Lupercalia became a celebration to help a uh, pregnant woman and sterile woman, women that have pregnancy issues that cannot actually get pregnant. So, uh, the feast of Lup uh, Lupercalia became as a celebration to help those women. And every year on the 15th of February. This celebration was held to honor the god of fertility, uh, Luper Lupercus. So in Rome, they call this god of fertility Lupercus. And in Greece, they call him Pan. So it's the same exact god. They have the same characteristics. Half human and half animals. So they were both god of fertilities. 
And Pan was a satanic god who was associated with sexuality. And he was known to be having sex with animals and make them fertile because he was a god of fertility. He was known to be having sex with uh, goats and, and various other animals. He is also recognized as the, as the god of fields, groves, wooded glens, and often affiliated with sex. Because of this, Pan is connected to the fertility and the season of spring. Pan is famous for his sexual powers and is often depicted with a phallus. Diogenes of Sinope, speaking in jest, related a myth of Pan learning masturbation from his father, Hermes, and teaching the habit to shepherd. Women who had had sexual relations with several men were referred to as Pan girls. At a lupical altar, a male goat or goat and a dog were sacrificed by one or another of the Lupuki under the supervision of the Flemish, Dialis, Jupiter's chief priest. An offering was also made of salted milk cakes prepared by versal virgins. After the blood sacrifice, two Lupuki approached the altar. Their foreheads were anointed with blood from the sacrificial knife, then wiped clean with wool soaked in milk, after which they were expected to smile and or laugh. The sacrificial feast followed, after which the lubricant cut thongs known as fibria from the flayed skin of animals and ran with these naked or near naked along the old palatine boundaries in an anti-clockwise direction around the hill. So the festival of Lupercalia begins with the sacrifice of animals. They will usually take a goat and a dog. The goat uh, symbolizes uh, the pagan god as the god of shepherd and the dog would symbolize the, the same god as the protector of their flocks. So they would take uh, two uh, uh, animals to sacrifice to their pagan god, to their satanic god. And after that, after the blood sacrifice, uh, two priests or lupercate, they were called lupercate, after the god lupercus, they would go up on the altars and then their foreheads were anointed from the sacrificial knife with the blood. And then after that, the, the, the milk uh, that was prepared by the virgin was taken uh, with a wool. The wool was soaked in the milk that, were, that, were prepared for, uh, that was prepared by the virgin and it was used to wipe the blood off of off the, the forehead of the priest. So this is the first part of the, of the ritual. The first part of the festival is the sacrifice of the animals. And after that, they were supposed to be laughing. After being wiped off on the forehead, they were supposed to be laughing for some reason. That just to, that just part of the ritual. And then now the second part of the ritual was the fertility ritual. The fertility fertility ritual was the first part of the ritual, uh, in which they were um, taking the the skin of the goat or the skin of the animals that they sacrificed in the first part of the ritual and they were cut it off into strips in the form of straps and then they will strip down They're removing the clothes sometimes uh, they be naked or almost naked half naked the priest and then they were run around the temple with those straps and then any woman that they find on the way they would just slap the woman with those straps. And then it even says that a lot of women would volunteer themselves to be struck by those priests because they believe that during this fertility ritual, the pregnant woman and most of these women that would volunteer themselves were pregnant women. 
and then the sterile woman, women that cannot get pregnant, they have pregnancy issues. They will volunteer themselves to be hit or to be slapped by those straps because they believe that it will be a blessing from their satanic god lubricants or pain. It will be a blessing to be uh, uh, hit by those straps. So this is the second part of the ritual. The first part of the ritual is the sacrifice of the animals to the pagan god. And the second part of the ritual is the fertility ritual. Where they, they slap the woman, they hit the woman with the straps, dipped in the blood. Because those stripped, the, the, uh, the skin of the, uh, of the animals was cut off into strips. And it was dipped into, into the blood and was used to hit the woman. As a blessing, so they can have a very a better uh, pregnancy, or so that the woman that cannot give birth can be blessed. Lupercalia was also called Gius Fabriatus, after the instrument of purification called Fabria, which gave February its name. The festival was later known as Fabria, purifications or purging after the febron, which was used on the day. It was also known as Fabriatus and gave its name to Juno Fabrialis, Fabrialis or Fabriata in her role as its patron deity to a god called Febras and to February, the month during which it occurred. So the Romans uh, down the line decided to spice it up a little bit. So they extended the Feast of Lupercalia by adding a new name and giving it a new God. So now they're calling it Febria. Febria, which is named after the instrument of purification. We already read that earlier, that during the fertility part of the ritual, they will use traps dipped in, in blood to hit the woman as a blessing so they can be fertile. So those uh, uh, straps were called Fabria, and now they're calling it, they're calling the, the, the Feast of uh, Lupercalia Fabria. And then, as a matter of fact, the month of February was named after this uh, particular uh, uh, instrument of purification, which is Fabria. That's where you got it from. That's where you got the name of February from. And uh, as a matter of fact, the name of every single month uh, was named after their satanic God. But we're not going to touch on this right now. This is another topic for another time. So basically, they gave it a new God. They extended the Feast of Lupercalia. They gave it, they call it uh, down the line, they call it February, and they gave it a new God. So now you have this a two guy, you have a second guy. The first guy was um, called Lupercus, the Roman god, or the Greek god uh, Pan, the same exact god, the god of sexuality and fertility. So now you got the second god. So the Romans uh, down the line decided to spice it up a little bit. So they extended the feast of Lupercalia by adding a new name and giving it a new God. So now they're calling it February. February, which is named after the instrument of purification. We already read that earlier, that during the fertility part of the ritual, they will use traps dipped in, in blood to hit the woman as a blessing so they can be fertile. So those uh, uh, straps were called February. And now they're calling it, they're calling the, the, the Feast of uh, Lupercalia February. And then, as a matter of fact, the month of February was named after this uh, particular uh, uh, instrument of purification, which is February. That's where you got it from. That's where you got the name of February from. And uh, as a matter of fact, the name of every single month uh, was named after their satanic God. 
but we're not going to touch on this right now. This is another topic for another time. So basically, they gave it a new God. They extended the Feast of Lupercalia. They gave it, they call it, uh, down the line, they call it February, and they gave it a new God. So now you have this a two guy, you have a second guy. The first guy was um called Lupercus, the Roman god, or the Greek god uh Pan, the same exact god, the god of sexuality and fertility. So now you got the second god, Juno Fibriata, a festival said to be of Juno Fibriata or Juno Fibria, though it does not appear in Ovid's. Fasti was described by Albain Butler, famous as the author of Butler's Lives of Saints, who presented an aspect of the Roman Lupercalia as a festival of a Juno Febriata under the heading of February 14th. So now the second god is called the Roman goddess Juno is known as the God of love. She's known as the God of love and the God of marriage. And they were worshiped at the same exact time in February the 14th. They were worshiped at the same exact God. So now it's not just the God of Lup uh, the God Lupercus or the Greek God Pan that they were paying homage to, but now they have the, the Roman goddess that had it to the fold. Now they have two gods that they worship on uh, on February, in February the 14th. So basically, uh, Juno Fibriata became a new aspect of the Feast of Lupercalia. It was a new extension of the Feast of Lupercalia. They gave it uh, a new god, a goddess called Juno, a god of love and god of marriage. During a great art of the month of February in honor of Pan and Juno, on this occasion, it meets a variety of ceremonies. The names of young women were put into a box from which they were drawn by the men as chance directed. So after adding a new extension to the Feast of Lupercalia or Juno Fibriata, now they came up with a new rules of the game. It's called the matchmaking lottery, where the single woman would write down the name and put it in a box. And then the young man would go on and choose any names from the box. And whoever names you pick would be a lover during uh, uh, that period of time during uh, the rest of the festival and you will couple with that person during the rest of the festival and sometimes it will even last for one year they will stay together for uh, the rest of the year all the way up until the next festival until the next Juno Febriata and some of those union or relationship would even end up in marriage. And they were doing this uh, uh, in honor of the, the Roman goddess of love and marriage called Juno. They were doing this in honor of this god, this goddess, and also in honor of the god of fertility, the god of pain, the god of sexuality, and the god of fertility. They were doing this in honor of those two gods the God of fertilities and the God of love and marriage because they will couple, they will make love randomly. Like you don't even know how to know the person. You pick up a name randomly and then you're going to couple with the person for the rest of the year. And sometimes you will, you, you guys will even uh, end up getting married. This is just part of the ritual and that we're doing this in honor of the pagan gods, the god of sexuality, the god of love and marriage. In February the 15th, that's what 
the pagan Romans were doing. And it's the same exact thing that people are doing today, but with just different names. It's the same exact thing. They were doing this in honor of their pagan God, the God of fertility and the God of love, the God of marriage. The Roman goddess, uh, Juno, Juno Fabriata. That's essentially what people are doing, but under a different name. Now, you may ask yourself, how did the Feast of Lupercalia or Juno Fibriata, which was celebrated in February 14th, became known as Valentine's Day? So now this is the question. St. Valentine, known as St. Valentine of Rome, was a widely recognized third century Roman saint commemorating in Christianity on February 14th. From the high Middle Ages, his saint day has been associated with a tradition of courtly love. Saint Valentine was a clergyman, either a priest or a bishop in the Roman Empire ministered to persecuted Christians. He was martyred and his body buried at a Christian cemetery on the Via Vlaminia, close to the Ponte Milville, to the north of Rome, on February 14th, which has been observed as the Feast of St. Valentine since 496 AD. Antinus was later arrested again for continuing to evangelize and was sent to the prefect of Rome to the emperor Claudius himself. Cla Claudius took a liking to him until Valentinus tried to convince Claudius to embrace Christianity, whereupon Claudius refused and condemned Valentinus to death, commanding that Valentinus either renounce his faith or he would be beaten with clubs and beheaded. Valentinus refused and Claudius so Valentine, also known as Valentinus, was a wealthy Roman Christian. He was known to be ministering to persecuted Christians back then. And because of that, the people of the government didn't like him. And uh, one day he got apprehended by the Emperor Claudius, uh, who, according to the story, liked him at first. And but then uh the valentines the priests the, the christian priests uh tried to convince uh emperor claudius to convert into christianity but the emperor didn't like it and then he went on to tell uh valentine the priest that he should renounce his faith or or his religion if not it would be put to death and then the, the valentine the priest did not accept it and eventually was put into prison. And on February 14th, he got executed. He was murdered on February 14th. And after that, after his assassination, that's when he was called Saint Valentine because he was a Christian priest that was ministering to Christians. He was preaching Christianity to the people. And after he passed away, that's when they declared him. They 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 called him Saint Valentine. But when he was alive, they were not calling him. They were not calling him Saint Valentine, but they called him Saint Valentine after his death, because of his deed. Because they believed that he what he has done was good before God. That's why they call him Saint because he was doing the work of God. That's why they call him Saint after his death. And that's when the name of Saint Valentine came about. To abolish the heathen, lewd, superstitious custom of boys drawing the names of girls in honor of their goddess Fabriata, Juno, on the 15th of this month, several zealous pastors 
substituted the names of Saint and Billet given on this day. Doucet repeated Butler's descriptions of the attempt to substitute Saint's names and concluded that as the festival of the Lupercalia had commenced about the middle of February, the Christians appear to have chosen St. Valentine's Day for celebrating the new feast because it occurred nearly at the same time. The connection thus begun has been uncritically repeated to the modern day. So basically, in order to Christianize those pagan and satanic holidays, uh, the Christians back then, or the priests and the pastors, have decided to substitute the name of those pagan holidays with the name of the people that they call saint, the people that were executed. Uh, just like the example of Valentine's who was executed on the command of the emperor Claudius, because according to the history, there was also other Valentines that were executed around the same exact time. So because those events occurred around the same, around the same period of time, February 15th or February 14th. So they decided to take on the name and then and uh, uh, celebrate the new feast as St. Valentine's. And they call these people St. Valentine because they believe these people were religious people and they were killed because of the word of God. That's why they call them saint. The feast of St. Valentine of February 14 was first established in 496 by Pope Galatius I, who included Valentine among all those whose names are justly reverenced among men, but whose acts are known only to God. So now you guessed it. It was the Roman Catholic Church who first established these pagan holidays at Saint as Saint Valentine's Day. They're the one who did it. They first established this pagan holiday. They just mask it over. They use uh, a different name, but it's the same exact custom, same ritual, same worship, same custom, same exact God, the God of Lupercalia and the God of Juno Fibriata. This is essentially what you are, are, are commemorating on February 14th, but it's under a different name, disguised, disguised as Saint Valentine, when this has nothing to do with anything saint at all. That's not even a commandment from God. God did not even say to celebrate Saint Valentine. Who is Saint Valentine? This is a satanic holiday. It's a satanic holiday, bro. Let me tell you, the God, you are worshiping the God of Lupercalia and the God of Juno Fibriata. That's what you're doing. The goddess, the Roman goddess of love and marriage and the God of uh, uh, fertility and sexuality. That's what you're celebrating. Whether you want to believe it or not, because that's what you're doing. Satan deceived the whole world. Satan deceived the whole world. The prophecies say that Satan deceived the whole world. And that's just the way it is. And those pagan holidays are one of the deceptive tools used by the devil to deceive the entire world. Because that's, that, that's essentially what happened. So now, with that being said, most people are still going to go do it. With everything being said, they're going to try to rationalize in their mind for the reason that they're about to go do this uh, this uh, this ceremony. Well, I'm doing this because of my love. Most people are still going to go do it. Well, that's fine by me. Okay, listen. If you still uh, uh, want to go and worship Satan, the God of sexuality, uh, directly on a higher level, I don't have a problem with this. That's your priority. I don't have a problem with it. 
But but the most high God, he has a problem with it. Because you can leave it up all you want to. Have as much fun. Crack and open as many gifts as you want. And give it to your love. Or whoever you call. Whatever you call it. But once you enter into the grave and your spirit goes back to the most high, you got to stand and face him yourself. And I can tell you right now, you don't want to face God after spending your life worshiping Satan. Because you're going to have to answer for it. I'm not going to answer for it. I got to answer for myself. Because you're going to have to answer for it. So now, now you know exactly what the origin of Valentine's Day is. And you know exactly what the rituals that you participate in. And now it's up to you to make a choice. If you want to, if you want to continue doing it or if you want to do away with it. So now, with that being said, I'm going to say peace and blessing to all the viewers out there tuning in. And uh, like the video, uh, subscribe to my channels, share the videos so that the word can be spread throughout the four corners of the earth. And with that, I say peace and blessing.